Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to create a survey web app from scratch in 15 minutes with Omnis Studio. Let me quickly explain the functionality of the app. The user can answer the question, which smartphone manufacturers do you know? With these five possible responses, and he can select more than one of these options. The result of the survey is then displayed here in the top section by this nice graph or bar chart. I will create a database connection, the app logic, and the UI without plenty of code. So be curious. Well, the first thing I would do here in Omni Studio is to create a new project library for a web application. To do this, I go to Create New Project Library at the top and click on Web and Mobile and name the library Survey App. I can close the Design Editor and the Property Manager for the time being, because next I would like to show you the structure and the data of the database I have already prepared so that you get an impression of the data I'm working with here. The database I have prepared is a SQLite database file, which I will make available to you for download. You can find a link to it in the video description and here. But now, back to the database. To get an insight into the database, I open it with the database tool integrated in Omni Studio, the SQL browser. To do this, I create a new session. I also call it Survey App, like the library, and select SQLite as the type. Now I enter the path to my database file under host name, or I can go to the magnifying glass here and simply select my file. Before I'm going to save the session, I copy the host name because I need it right away. Okay. Next, I open the session I just created and then go to tables, and here I see directly that there are two tables in the database that have not been generated automatically, and these are the Answers table and the Options table. Let's take a look at the data in the Options table. Wonderful! There are already five records stored in this table. These records are representing the response options for the survey. If a user submits one or more of these response options as an answer, the ID or IDs of the selected answers will be saved in the other table, the Answers table, in the column Answer ID. This in turn enables me to calculate a result from the answers given, i.e. how often which answer option was ticked, and I can then also display this result directly in my web app. So far, so good. Back to the library. Now I will create the database connection for the respective user. I can create this in Omni Studio with only one line of code, or three lines, as I also want to include error handling. To do this, I go into the remote task and create a new task variable. I call it tSession object of the type object and select SQLite session as the subtype. This object will then hold the database session. Here in the remote task, I will ask the tSession object to please log on to the database. However, I also want to check directly whether this worked out. To do this, I call this command indirectly in the condition of an if clause. And in my special case, I turn the if condition around, so I ask whether the call did not work. So I put an if clause here, and in the condition I type not, so that the condition is reversed, and then simply add t session object dot dollar logon, so that the session will be opened. As a parameter, I have to specify the host name, which I already copied, and put it here in inverted commas. And since I have neither a username nor a password, I simply pass comma hash null, comma hash null. In case the session could not be established, I would like to show a message to the user stating db logon failed. Wonderful. To make it really easy to work with the data or tables in the app later, I create a schema class and a matching table class for each table or list. And this is also very easy to do. I go back to the SQL browser, or more precisely, to the survey app session and drag the tables that I want to interact with and drop it onto my library. 
This way, I have created these two schema classes here. Now, I still need the corresponding table classes. But first, I will create an additional table class, which I can then use as a superclass, that saves code and time. I call this superclass TASuper, refer it to the task variable of the remote task, and also assign it directly to the session object I already created. In addition, I don't want to save the ID when saving data, because in my case this will be determined automatically by the database. So this is also included here. And that's it for the superclass. Now I derive two more table classes from it. Call the first one TA Answers, and the second one TA Options and connect each of these to the appropriate schema class. So TA answers is connected to the answers schema class and no surprise, the TA options to the options schema. Now I'm going to build the front end, the visual part for the user. And thanks to the visual editor, this can be done really quickly in Omni Studio compared to most other programming languages. So I will now edit my remote form and before I change anything here, I check how it looks live or test it. Yes, here I see the standard template. Not so exciting at this stage. I'll go back and delete these standard components first. To inform the user what the survey is about, I first insert a label as the title and type the text, which of the following smartphone manufacturers do you know? In addition, I want to have a bar chart in the survey app to display the results visually. A complex grid where the response answers are listed, and a button to submit the selected answer or answers. Now I need a checkbox in the complex grid for each possible option. I delete the text here and use a label instead, as this is easier to load the label text dynamically. Also, I switch off the two headers of the complex grid. Then I rename the components. I simply name the label for the title label, and the bar chart simply bar chart. And I name the complex grid, no surprise, complex grid. I'm quite creative today. I name the checkbox checkbox. the label checkbox, label checkbox, and the button, button. My next step is to align the components a bit more nicely and to set its edge float property to right so that its width automatically adjusts to the screen size. I also quickly paste the mobile layout into the desktop layout and adjust everything to fit the width and I change the edge floats to center left right so that everything is now automatically centered. Then I test my work again. Hmm, I think that doesn't look bad after all. Now the data are still missing. To add them to my app, I go back to Omni Studio and go to the methods here. For each list that I need, I create a list variable that is connected to the appropriate table class. So here, I options list, list, TA options for the options, and I chart list for the chart. But we still don't have a table class for the results because these are made up of both the options table and the answers table. In SQL, this could be done with a join, and I could use that here as well, but there is another really helpful tool in Omni Studio, and that's the Query Builder. So I go back to the SQL browser and open the Query Builder. For the results, I need the answers table and the options table. In addition, the ID of the response options is linked to the answer ID. From this, I make a left join 
and as the first column, I now need the number of times the respective answer was selected. Therefore, I make a count here on the IDs in the answers table. and call the column value. As the second column, I then need the label of the answer, and for this I simply tick the column here and label it with label. To make sure that the count now also counts per answer option, I group it here according to the ID of the options. Then I let the query builder put the SQL statement together and execute it directly. That looks fantastic. Now the query builder also shows another advantage, as it can now simply generate a table class from it, which I name TA chart list to match the list. The only thing left to do now, before I can use them, is to derive them from my superclass. I simply do that here via the property manager. However, the query builder has also overwritten the dollar construct, so I have to manually derive it from the superclass again. Now I can go back to the code of the remote form and assign the table class that I just created to the iChart list variable as a subtype. To fill these lists, now I create a $load method here in the remote form that is to load the lists. The iChart list already has got a method to load the data thanks to the query builder, but the iOptions list hasn't. To create this method, I go to the table class of the iOptions list and insert a dollar $load here. Here I select the required data or leave the parameter for selecting empty and so select everything and then fetch the data with $fetch. Later, Later the, the responses, responses selected, selected in this list must, must be saved. saved. Therefore, Therefore, I also I need, need a another temporary, temporary column, column and another method. Another method. First, I add a new column in the dollar construct. In order to be able to edit this method, I have to overwrite it. And to make sure that the code from the superclass is also executed here, first I specify this here with do inherited. So a new column, I call it checked, and it should be of the type Boolean. The checkbox from my remote form will later interact with this column and, depending on whether the user ticks it, the checked column will be set to true or false for the selected answer. This will then allow me to check which answers I need to save. I check the whole thing here too, but in a new method, and I call it $submit. Here I now go with a loop through the current list. and check which response options the user has ticked. And if one response was ticked, I insert a record for it in the answers table. I'll do this using an insert row, which is inherited from the answers table class. Perfect. Now I can go back to the code of the remote forms and load the lists. To make sure the data are loaded when the form is opened, I trigger this dollar $load from the dollar construct. And I link the components to the lists so that the data can be seen in the form. To do this, I enter the iChart list here in the data name of the bar chart and the iOptions list here in the complex grid. In addition, I now link the components in the complex grid to the corresponding columns. So the checkbox with iOptionsList.checked and the label with iOptionsList.description. And then the text here can also be removed from the label. So I'll quickly test my work. That looks very good, doesn't it? Now all that's missing is that the user should be able to save his answer with the button. Therefore, I go back into the remote form and here into the dollar event method of the button and tell the i options list dollar submit this saves the answer then i reload the form with dollar load so that the saved answer can be seen directly in the form so my little survey app is ready let's have a look at it wonderful i can easily enter my answer here and it all works perfectly 
I hope you enjoyed the video and that you have got a good overview of how quickly and easily you can build a web application in Omni Studio. And if you want to get started with your app development right away, you can find a link to the free community edition here. See you next time.